Thank you, dear friends, for coming to the memorial service of Dr. Stuart Nelson. Our scripture reading is a compilation of Bible texts. John 14, 1 through 3, 2 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, and 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 18. Let none of your hearts be troubled. As you have believed in God my Father, you can also have confidence in me. There are many mansions in my Father's house. I am preparing one of them just for you, and I will come again soon to take you there. You have fought a good fight. You have finished your course. You have kept the faith. I have a crown of righteousness waiting for you. In a very short time, I will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. I will take my people home, both the dead and the living, and they will always be with me where I am. Comfort one another with these words. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we come this afternoon to remember and to honor Dr. Stuart Nelson, who, as a physician, extended the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. We thank you for his long life of dedication to the glory of God and to the service of humanity. Father, hold Lily and the Nelson family close to you and give them a peace that only you can give. May they seek you daily for comfort, support, courage, and love as they pass through this time of great sorrow. As we have all come together to share our memories and our sympathy, may we be drawn closer together in love through Jesus, who has assured us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Dear Lord, the words of a song say it so well. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. May that wonderful day come soon, and may every one of us be found faithful. We pray in the holy and lovely name of Jesus, our Creator, Redeemer, and soon-coming King. Amen.
everything's fine. We just have a moment of uh, a little challenge. So it's being taken care of, and uh, we'll continue in just a second.
My dad, Stuart Lemuel Nelson, was born on November 25, 1928, in Detroit, Michigan, to Harry and Mabel Wilcox Nelson. The young family moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota when dad was just six weeks old. And four years later, he was joined in the family by his younger sister, Barbara. Mabel, dad's mother, loved to tell a story about one morning when she'd prepared mush for breakfast. Harry, dad's father, had finished his breakfast and he was ready to go out the door and he leaned in to give Mabel a kiss goodbye. And just at that moment, dad said, more mush, mom, at the time of the kiss. Stewart attended Cooper School through the seventh grade and then attended Twin Cities Junior Academy up through the 10th grade before transferring to Maplewood Academy. In his senior year, he was class valedictorian. In an article from Maplewood's newspaper introducing the graduates, it describes dad like this. Two years ago, Minneapolis gave Maplewood another senior. His name is Stuart Nelson, whose sincerity is told in his hazel eyes. Stuart's hair is black. If you ever get a letter with a foreign or unusual stamp on it, you can be sure he'll be around to bargain for it. You see, his hobby is collecting stamps. He has quite a collection now, too. Stuart thinks that spring is the nicest season of the year. This is because he can play football then till his heart's content. He also likes skating and volleyball. Because he believes people should continue learning through life, he studies encyclopedias. And he likes to study the World Almanac, too. Stuart doesn't have any favorite subject, but he certainly enjoys physics. After graduating from Maplewood in 1946, Dad attended Union College in Lincoln, Nebraska. The family moved to Lincoln, allowing him to live at home, and he graduated from Union College in 1951, but stayed on in Lincoln, taking more classes and doing some postgraduate work. In August of 1952, he started medical school at the College of Medical Evangelists, now known as Loma Linda University in California. Graduating four years later in 1956, Dad moved east to do his internship at Washington Sanatorium and Hospital in Tacoma Park, Maryland. Stewart performed a year of public health work on a Lakota Sioux Indian reservation in the Dakotas. He worked hard to deliver the best medical care possible. He was proud of his work and he kept a beaded bolo tie that he had received as a gift there in his dresser drawer for decades. In late August 1958, his national service finished, he hurried back to Maryland for his wedding to Marilyn Lucille Small. He'd met her while working at the Washington San. She was in nurses training at the Washington Missionary College and they dated and become engaged before he left for the Dakotas. The first of their six children, Jeffrey Stewart, was born in June of 1959, followed by Gregory Allen, Randall Todd, Marlon Duane, Robert Kevin, and finally Marilyn Leanne. Six children in nine years made for a busy household. The family could be seen every Sabbath at Sligo Seventh-day Adventist Church in Tacoma Park, Maryland, recognizable by the matching jackets on the boys. I remember often being identified as the littlest Nelson. The hospital, the church, elementary school, high school, and college were a big part of our lives as a Christian family. In January of 1974, while working on the house, Stuart tripped and fell from a second floor deck, suffered a traumatic head injury. The family scrambled to call the ambulance and get him to the hospital. With the finest medical care from his colleagues, he got through that hard time, began the long recovery before he was able to return to the profession he loved. As for the family, 
we got through thanks to the love, prayers, and support of friends and the church community. You know, education was always an important family value. And we worked hard. Dad enjoyed attending our concerts, programs, and our graduations. He could be seen out in the audience, his eyes twinkling, a broad smile on his face, holding his camera to record the event for posterity. Mom at his side when he was here. Dad always impressed us of the importance of lifelong learning. In late 1977, Stewart moved to Keene, Texas, here, in order to oversee the development of the emergency medicine department at Hughley Memorial Hospital, it was just opening up in Fort Worth. He loved Keene, the city, the college, the church. As a church member, a medical doctor, a nursing chemistry professor, and even serving a stand as mayor, told he was referred to by some as Dr. Mayor, he gave himself to contribute what he could to the community. Someone sent in a memory. He taught me physics, this person said. Uh, no, sorry, pathophysiology in nursing. I'm sorry. He likes physics, but he taught pathophysiology in nursing and made it very interesting as he had many experiences to share. He also was still delivering babies when I started OB. I remember an adoption where he took care of the mother and then we discharged the baby to him and he took the baby to his new adoptive parents in the parking lot. That was the way it was done then. He was the end of an era where a family doctor was a true diagnostician and he was good at it. He, was all, he, he has always been friendly and kind to me over the years. <clears throat> At the Keene Seventh-day Adventist Church, he soon met another Tacoma Park Sligo Church expatria, Lily Catherine Garner, mom. The Nelson and Garner families knew each other from their involvement in Sligo Elementary School up in Maryland. Angie was a class ahead of Jeff and Lisa and Chris started school the same, and Lisa was in there with uh, Greg, and Chris started school the same year as Leanne. And everyone else was spread out in between. When Stuart and Lily were married in 1979, all nine of the Nelson and Garner offspring participated in the ceremony over in the youth chapel. Stuart loved reading, photography, sports, working around the yard. He gave a whole new meaning to the holiday, Labor Day, as we were all assigned our jobs on the property, sprucing up the house on Honeysuckle Drive. He loved the Texas crepe myrtles and the oleanders out in the yard, and he enjoyed spending time in the Texas room that he and Lily had built onto their house on the outskirts of Keene. He'd sit there looking out the windows at the birds in the backyard. Dad and Mom loved to travel and went on many trips with friends over to East Texas. I believe they went to Branson as well and other places. Dad had always had a dream of someday doing missionary work and he was able to realize this by going on trips to Romania with Mom joining him on two of them. When he retired, he donated some of the medical equipment from his offices to a health center in Romania. As news of Dad's passing spread and messages of condolence came in from friends and family, they'd often mention that he'd, he'd been their doctor, their family doctor. He was a good doctor, they said. It's something that we've heard for years. This past week, though, they've also been saying he was a good man. I have lots of memories of my dad, obviously, but one of the most enduring ones is this, and it's him sitting on the couch or in his chair 
with his Bible or his Sabbath school lesson or the great controversy or some other work, reading. And that is something I will never forget. It's a picture that is burned on my brain. And what a testimony that is.
I think Dr. Nelson would be a very proud grandpa right now, don't you? <laughs> this has been beautiful to, to hear the music and to see these young lives. In the Bible, <clears throat> in Colossians chapter 4 and verse 15, we read these words. Colossians chapter 4. And it's Paul sending greetings to this church, but he also is mentioning that he is, he's not alone. In Colossians chapter 4 and verse 15, he says this, And our dear friend Luke, the doctor, and Demas send greetings as well. If you have the King James Version, it says, Our beloved physician, Luke. You see, we know exactly when Luke joined Paul. In Acts chapter 16, as Paul is getting ready for a missionary journey, he's facing a lot of stress and frustration in his life. Acts 16 says he, he wants to go, uh, he thought that at first he would go over towards uh, Ephesus. And, and God closed that door and it didn't happen. And then he thought he would go up towards Bithany, where Istanbul is today. God closed that door and it didn't happen. Now one thing I know about him, he can't go left, he can't go right, he's not going back. So he keeps going forward. And the reason why that's important is he finds himself in Troas. And that vision, you remember, to come on over? Something significant happens right there. <clears throat> that affects, I think, Paul for the rest of his life. Because the narrative changes from they, third person plural, to we, first person plural. The physician, Luke, has joined Paul at this spot and will be with him for the rest of his life. I, can you imagine having Paul for a patient? <laughs> I don't know this, this personality and all that God had in store for him to do. Only in heaven will we know how much this physician impacted the life of Paul in his travels, in his teaching, in his preaching, when he was stoned, when he was abused. Luke was there. <clears throat> no wonder he's called the great friend, the beloved physician. Today, for just a few moments, I want to focus your attention on another doctor. One that we know well, Dr. Stuart Nelson. And I want to suggest something to you. That this also was a, a beloved physician. Our dear friend. I want you to think for a moment of the people that his life served over the decades of, of, of working as a physician. You know, I had to go into the hospital here a, a couple years ago, and I had a pulmonologist, and as I got better acquainted with him, we became friends, and towards the end, he'd helped me quite a bit. And I said, Doc, I just really appreciate what you've done. He says, you've got to preach the gospel. <laughs> he just sort of slammed his hand down. You've got to preach the gospel. How many people... Do you think that, that Dr. Nelson served? From the humble to the, to the highest men and women and children. Keeping them strong. Restoring them to their health for the task of life that God has appointed them. Only in heaven will we have any idea how this man's life affected so many other people's lives that they could be of service to God. You see, to be a physician, and there are physicians here today, and there's family members of physicians, you know that it takes great spiritual powers of sympathy. There needs to be a tenderness and compassion for people, a passion for curing ailments, responsibilities where there's calls day and night, bravery and courage in treating diseases. All those things that we probably don't even notice and don't realize are going on every day 
in the life of a physician. It went on in the life of, of Dr. Stuart Nelson. John Greenwith, Greenleaf Whittier wrote this poem about physicians. He sent it to a friend of his that was a physician. It's called The Healer. It says this, He stood of old, the Holy Christ, amidst the suffering throng, with whom His lightest touch sufficed to make the weakest strong. The healing gift He lent to them, who used it in His name, that power that filled His garments, Him, is evermore the same. The paths of pain are thine, go forth with patience, trust, and hope. The sufferings of a sin-sick earth shall give thee ample scope. Beside the unveiling mysteries of life and death, go stand with guarded lips and reverent eyes and pure of heart and hand. So shall thou be with power endued with him who went about. He went about the Syrian hillside doing good and casting demons out. The last paragraph says, The good physician liveth yet, thy friend and guide to be. The healer by Gethsemane shall walk his rounds with thee. I truly believe that God walked in the light of our friend Dr. Stuart Nelson. That he made his rounds with him as he visited individuals, varying situations and circumstances they found themselves in. No wonder the Bible says in Proverbs 10.7 that the memory of the just is blessed. Today we're celebrating the life of a man, a, a teacher, father, a husband, a friend, neighbor, physician, and a colleague who accepted Christ as a young man in his life, as his Savior, and then lived out that life and those convictions. This young man went to church as a baby. Now you say, now how do you know that? Because my father-in-law went with him. <laughs> the first time that I, when I moved here about 28 years ago and in a Sabbath school, and I, I meet Dr. Nelson he asked me, what is your wife's maiden name? And I told him, and he said, told my wife, your dad and I were in cradle roll together in the Stevens Avenue Church in Minneapolis. <laughs> this young man had a heart full of the Lord. A family that, that believed in Christian education. And he accepted Christ as a young man. And he lived out those convictions. It, has, it is as the sun sets that we see the length and shadows of a person's life. And that shadow of Stuart Nelson fell upon his family. He loved his wife, his children, his grandchildren, and he loved making a, a home for them. Now, these, these sons, I don't know you, but I want to tell you something. When I was in college at Columbia Union College in 1973, I was just become a Christian. And I was going overseas to be a student missionary, and they said I had to have shots. And so they sent me to Dr. Cromwell and Dr. Nelson's office. And I walked in, and he had the most beautiful young girl <laughs> working in that office. I mean, it took my breath away. She was gorgeous. Now, she just graduated from high school, <laughs> was working there in his office. I, I would not see her for another two years when I came back from overseas. I asked her what she thought. She said, I look scary. I had hair down to my shoulders and the beard. And the mission field soon took care of all that. But I said, what do you remember about Dr. Nelson? She said, let me tell you what I remember. Are these boys, stair steps, <laughs> these boys that came into his office. She said, I, I remember them. He thought so much of his family. He loved you. He installed in his children a love for learning, Christian education. We are so thankful that he, he taught chemistry on our campus. So thankful that his family believes in Christian education and this new nursing building that's going up. 
perpetual, again, that shadow that falls on the things that he, he cared for and loved. And he certainly loved his family and his children his, and his grandchildren and his great-grandchildren. He'd be very proud today to, to see what's been done here. I think that shadow also fell across his church, as you know. We have this hope. Ming's going to do that song for us in just a few moments. It's a passage. Leo read about this hope. And I believe that Dr. Nelson, he knew Christ as his Savior, so he knows that Jesus is coming again, that there'll be a resurrection, and there'll be a reunion. That those that love Jesus will come together and have a chance to reunite in that circle that will never be broken again in loving each other. I believe and I know that he believed that. His shadow fell across this church in so many ways in his service. His shadow fell across his profession, medicine. Uh, today after church, I intentionally went around and talked to some folks. Talked to one gentleman that was an intern with Dr. Nelson at Hughley Hospital. He told me, he said, uh, he cared about me as an intern. He said, you don't realize how unique that is. <laughs> he said, so many times interns get sort of shuffled and moved. He said, he really, he cared about me as an intern. He said, something else is that I, I really knew that he believed what he said. He kept up with the treatments and the procedures. He was a man of integrity. The hectic schedule of an intern. And he noticed that in Dr. Nelson. That shadow also fell upon his patients. I talked to several of them today after church for just a few moments. Again and again I heard the same thing. He had time. That he was patient with you. They felt that he had respect for them as a person. He said, I didn't feel like I was just sh shuttled in and shuttled out. Someone once told me when I went into teaching, you can't fool kids and dogs. <laughs> they know if you like them. I want to suggest that that's true in, in any profession. I, I think that's true with physicians too. That people can tell and people could tell in Dr. Stuart Nelson's life that he wanted to be there, that he truly cared about your life and wanted to bring healing, extending the hand of Jesus. He also cared about his community. Now, some of you that are not from Keene, this may sound strange, but one thing I, I always enjoyed was going to uh, Sunday morning cemetery breakfast. Now, some of you say, what in the world are you talking about? But those that are here know that that's where you go because all your friends and neighbors and family are there, right? It's the best food in the house. Now, I'm telling you, if you're running for a political office, you need to be at that cemetery breakfast. That's where you're going to meet everybody in Keene. And I still remember him coming. And you all came for years, even when it was difficult to come. You'd come for those, seminary, those cemetery breakfasts. And uh, I saw there the camaraderie and the fellowship that he had with his community. In Revelation 20, we talk about a millennium. This is after Jesus comes. After the text that you read, Leo, where the Lord Himself descends from heaven with a child and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ to arise first and then we which are alive remain are caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. I'm so thankful for Revelation 20. It gives a picture that before we even really get about the business of eternity, God says, I bet you have some questions. I bet there's some things you wonder about in life. I bet maybe some of you even went to sleep not knowing the rest of the story in some people's lives. Can you imagine what the millennium is going to be? I, I try to imagine when Paul meets Luke. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Paul just thanks him so much for all that he did. And, and I think they both will be astonished to see what God did with this life and how much he used this physician. I think it will be a place 
where doctors will meet patients. And they'll get to hear about how God used their life for the kingdom's sake. I think it'll be a place sometimes when family members get to meet family members who have prayed for them. Maybe they, they didn't live the Christian life and sometimes folks pass from the scene. But can you imagine the millennium where family members get to reunite and hug, get to ask those questions that wondering why God, I think, in the millennium wants that time. And it's there during that time, I think, that 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think this is what Paul's talking about when he says this. Listen in verse, chapter 15, verse 51. Talking about this reunion, this time we have together, family, with loved ones again. It's a promise. God wrote it down. We can believe it. It says this. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trump will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable and the mortal with immortality. And when the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? Right now you're feeling that sting, family members. That, that one you love. And God created us to, to sense that loss. And He has a plan to heal that loss in your life. And He has a plan to bring families back together again. But it's the last part of this passage. Listen to what it says. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I believe Dr. Nelson knew that. That the hours, the time that he put into family and profession and patience and community and church, that God would multiply that for the kingdom's sake. That there will be people in the kingdom that he had a chance to touch and be the hands of Jesus and bring healing in their life. Aren't you glad for God's promises? Aren't you glad that you, even in this time of loss, that there are memories that you can share that remind you God has a plan. This is not the final say-so about Dr. Stuart Nelson's life. This is the part where we put him now in God's hands, right? And God in his time. And I'm just so thankful for that. And you know, for a few moments here, and I've, I've got a couple of fellows that are going to run. Who's going to run the, the mics for me here? We have a couple of, oh, ladies, excuse me. A couple of ladies that are, uh, here's what I'd like to do. And I, and I said something to some folks out in the hall, and somebody said, I'd like to say something about that. I'd like to just take a moment. We're not going to take long. But I, if you've got a memory, something you'd like to share, I would like you to say this so the family will know. Would you give your name? And maybe the first time you met Dr. Nelson. And then share with us what you're going to share. Uh, who would like to share something with? You just raise your hands and these young ladies will find you. Is there someone here that wants to? Yes. Go right ahead, Doc. I met Dr. Nelson in... Tacoma Park. I taught his kids at Tacoma Academy. We moved down here in uh, 98 to retire and uh, he recognized us in sub school and uh, it wasn't long until there was a group of Kenites here that were about the same age and we kind of had a little group of who they were founding members really and we had a little potluck that we would have every after, after, in Sabbath in our homes and sometimes we would go over to Cleburne State Park, where the lake is there, take our food and go and have our meal there and sit around and talk. And in the afternoon, as, it, as the sun was going down, someone would say, let's go for a walk around the lake. Now, Stuart was a competitive guy. He loved to win. And he loved these races. And so we would go troop, trooping off around the lake. 
we would get about halfway around the lake and he would take off in another direction. And we would run and try to beat him. Every time we'd get to the dam over there, he'd be sitting on the dam, smiling. <laughs> he was very competitive, he loved to win. That's the way I want to remember Stuart. Amen, amen. Thank you so much, Doc. Who else? Just, just raise your hand, we're just gonna take a minute. I see a couple hands back here, yeah. And I think there's another one behind that hand as well. There's a couple hands back here. Right in front, you just walk, by. there you go. You got a hand right there. Ido Ortiz is my name. Dr. Nelson went to visit our house. This happened about 35 years ago. He took Kevin and I think Leanne was there also. We live out in the country and uh, I was taking the boys out for a motorcycle ride in the pasture. And it wasn't really a ride. We were chasing cows uh, on a motorcycle. And one of the cows decided to make a U-turn. And I wasn't prepared for it. So I went down and the kids went one way, I went the other way but I could not move. I had the motorcycle on top of my leg. So one of the boys ran to the house and called Dr. Nelson. He was visiting there. So he came in the car down the pasture and he saw me laying down and, and then he looked around and he saw this cow about 50 yards away and he said, were you chasing that cow? And I said, yes, sir. Don't you know better than that? I know now. <laughs> anyway, he said, well, let's see what happened to you. So he picked up the motorcycle off my foot and started checking around. And he said, well, you broke it. I'm going to have to take you to the emergency room. Well, uh, he said, I'm going to help you up. So he put his hand, you know, behind under my arm and picked me up and dragged me. And all I remember is that he said, oh no. Well, he said his hand was kind of green and <laughs> anyway, can you stand there by yourself? <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. <laughs> and he began to clean his hand in the pasture there in the grass. Well, he got me in the car, all right, and he took uh, me to Hughley. And we went in the emergency room, and he called Dr. Thomas. Uh, Dr. Thomas came. It was on a Saturday afternoon, by the way. And they fixed my leg. He put a cast. And at the end of the conversation, he said, would you please quit chasing cows on a motorcycle? <laughs> And so I decided to use horses now. <laughs> Do horses. <laughs> Thank you, Edo. I, I saw another one right behind, and then uh, Dr. Duran as well. Yes, ma'am. My name is Sharon Chandler. And uh, Stuart always treated me like I was his daughter. And at the potlucks, almost every time, if we sat at the table with him and Lily, well, I'd always leave a little bit of food on my plate. And he'd shake his head at me when I'd get up to go to my, get my dessert. And he'd say, uh-uh, you got to eat that food on that plate before you go get dessert, girl. I loved him to death. Amen. Amen. Yes, Dr. Duran. Okay, my name is Loris Durant. And I knew Dr. Nelson at Union College. Uh, actually, I didn't know him but he knew my sister and I because we were the only Egyptian girls there. So, but he always reminded me of that and always asked me about my sister. But what I want to share with you a couple of incidents that show, first of all, what an excellent diagnostician he was and what a wonderful teacher also he was. Uh, I had severe headaches when I was working here at Southwestern. That's easy to come about, you know, when you're under great stress. But I thought for a while that maybe I had a tumor in my brain, you know. Uh, has, uh, but he made a house call and he examined me very thoroughly and decided it was my eyes that were uh, the problem. 
So he sent me to an ophthalmologist in Dallas, and sure enough, it was a glaucoma, uh, a different kind of glaucoma, which is easy to uh, take care of. And uh, it was taken care of by a surgical procedure, and I was well. And I had other experiences where, again, he diagnosed, diagnosed me correctly, and I was well. Uh, thinking one time that it was my heart, but it wasn't. It was uh, a a hernia or something. So he was just again and again always hitting the nail on the right side. I mean, he was able to diagnose you properly. And one time, now the other incident I want to share with you is that I needed a teacher for pathophysiology in the nursing department. And I searched everywhere, I called Loma Linda, I called here, there. And finally, someone said, you know, Dr. Nelson used to teach pathophysiology at Washington Adventist uh, uh, College uh, in Washington somewhere, uh, and uh, maybe he can help you. So I went to him, and sure enough, he saved my life. He taught pathophysiology to the nursing students, and it was just a wonderful experience. He just was there any time I needed him, whether it was for health reasons or for educational purposes, but he was my savior in many ways, Amen. and I, I'm grateful to him for that. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Durham. Someone else? Not going to take long, just somebody else want to say something? All the way back. We'll come back here. <clears throat> can you imagine what it will be like when we get to heaven and we don't have clocks and, and we can talk about these things? Yes. Jerry Ulrich. Beverly Ulrich. I met Dr. Nelson back in 77 at Hughley because I started back then too. And there's times that I would much rather have him sew me up as far as sutures than a plastic surgeon because Stuart was that good. My wife ended up working for him, which was a blessing, and he wasn't only her boss, he was a friend and he cared about us. And a little humorous thing that happened right here in church, during the sermon, Dr. Nelson had one of his patients, an elderly patient, sitting right next to him. And she really trusted him because her pacemaker battery went dead and she fell asleep and fell right into his lap. <laughs> but he knew how to take care of people. He knew how to respect people. And uh, for the rest of my life until Jesus comes, uh, he will have a special place in my heart. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Someone else? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> we knew Dr. Nelson in Tacoma Park. Yes. And then we moved here about the time they did, about 74. And I worked for Dr. Nelson at the same time. Uh, Beverly Urich. Yes. And uh, also was friends of theirs. Went on some of their trips especially one particular over to East Texas. And we had a great friendship. Stuart was always a big teaser, <laughs> always teasing. But he was a real special friend of ours, his, him and Lily both. Amen, amen. Ming, if you make your way, are, are you down here? Yes, yeah, yeah, come right on over if you would. Anybody, I, I appreciate. I, heaven is going to be a wonderful place where we have this time. To thank God for His blessings that He gave us in the lives of these people that have been so dear to us. I mean, you have this song, We Have This Hope. That's our prayer today. And I pray today that God would bless that this is a song that will sing and ring in our hearts, not just in this service, but till Jesus comes.
Before I have closing prayer, and Ming will play our last special music, when I finish prayer here, I'd like you to remain seated and our, uh, our pallbearers, as soon as I finish prayer, would you please stand and come over and stand and the ushers will come down and they will take the family out into the foyer. They want to meet and greet you and we'll do that there. So whenever uh, our special music's over, pallbearers, if you'll come and stand and the ushers will come and usher the family out. Let's bow our heads, please. Father in heaven, it must be amazing to some people to hear laughter at a funeral, even though we've heard today. And it's because we have this hope that we know that in the midst of this earth and this life, in the midst of death and the loss, and we sense that today with Dr. Stuart Nelson, that we have this hope and we know that soon and very soon, Jesus, you will come and this family will be back together again. I pray for them until then. That not only will they have the memories, but they'll have the promises in your word. That we will trust that you are coming. And then this one especially that we love will be raised to meet his family. And together we shall be together with the Lord. Thank you for these promises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.